Okay. So, let us continue with the preparation of the sample. After spotting the TLC plate with this mixture, add about 0.5 gram of basic alumina. I have weighed 0.5 gram of alumina on a top loading balance. So, after finishing weighing the alumina, add this alumina to the dissolved mixture of ferrocene and acetoferrocene in this beaker. Use a spatula, just mix it well and keep this aside for drying purposes because we are not going to add the sample as a solution to our column but we are going to add it as a dry powder. How will it become dry? I have dissolved it in methylene chloride. I have added alumina, but by the time we prepare the column and we are ready to add our sample, all of the methylene chloride would have evaporated off, leaving behind a dry mixture of my mixture and alumina there. Now, why do I have to make it into a dry solid mixture? Remember, I weighed about 0.15 gram of the mixture of ferrocene and acetoferrocene. That is very small amount for the separation purposes. It is, if you are experienced, then it is okay. You will be able to load that mixture onto the column without any problem. However, since this is our first time doing column chromatography, when we transfer the mixture, if you try to rinse the beaker to transfer all of it, then you may end up adding too much of the solvent to rinse and that will not give a good separation on the column. That is the reason why we are adding alumina and making this amount higher. So, in case there is a little bit left, we are not losing a whole lot of our sample but it will also be some of alumina that will be left in the beaker. So, this is the preparation of sample. So, now we are going to prepare the column to separate the mixture that we prepared. So, how do we prepare a column? This is a glass column obviously that you see here. It looks like a burette which you have used before. There is a stopcock here in the vertical position it is open that means whatever is in here will drain through a hole in this Teflon stopcock. If you turn it and make it horizontal then it is stopped that means there is no flow of solvent taking place in the column. So, remember column chromatography is a type of adsorption chromatography which means there has to be a solid stationary phase in it and then we will be adding the mobile liquid phase. So, what happens if I add solid to this column? There is a hole here that hole will get clogged by the solid adsorbent. So, to avoid that what we do is we insert a piece of glass wool. How do we do that? Just take a tiny piece of glass wool and by the way glass wool as the name suggests is made out of glass. This is glass that you are touching but it is very soft. So, press it into a tiny ball if you will and drop it in. And then using a glass rod, you can push this piece of glass wool in this fashion. If you want to compress it more, you could. Now on top of this piece of glass wool, 
I am going to add sea sand because notice glass wool is fibrous. There is space here for alumina that is my solid adsorbent to go and get stuck. So, we want to avoid that. We want to cover this glass wool entirely by sea sand. So, take some sea sand and add it over the column. If your column is dry, nothing gets stuck to the sides. If the column is wet, some sand may get stuck to the side. So, and make sure that you are using a dry column. Now, the next question is how much of sand should I add? If all of the glass wool is nicely covered by sand, that is enough. And what happens if I take a little bit more sand? There is absolutely no harm in taking a little bit excess of sand. So, I have glass wool, I have sand, now I am ready to prepare my solid stationary face. 